Hello, my name is Connie Howard. I am a Gold Star mother, and I would like to welcome everyone here today. And that this is a huge doings for us and for our community. And what this monument means is all these names that are on these walls. It's for their families. So I'm going to start. I'd like to ask everybody to stand, and we're going to pledge. Allegiance to the flag. Where is our flag? Back here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we will now have the singing of the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Don Goreski, could you please come to the front? Oh, we're going to have the invocation. If you'd remove your hats, please. Bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much to be able to gather here and honor those that have sacrificed so much. I'm reminded of how the rain came down today, all the tears that have been shed near and far for our heroes that have given all. Lord God, I also am reminded, as the rain stopped, how you promised to wipe away every tear. Thank you so much. I'm also reminded from your word, Lord, that perfect love is the man who is willing to lay down his life for his brother. I ask that you would carry the Gold Star families and their friends, Lord, in the palm of your hands, because the pain was not just for one day. It's each and every day they face. We pray this in the holy name of the Prince of Peace. Amen. And peace. Good afternoon, folks. Thank you for uh, attending our dedication today. Uh, at this time, I would like to introduce uh, Mayor Derek Slaughter. You may be seated. Good afternoon. It is an honor to be asked to say a few words as we unveil the Pennsylvania Gold Star Monument. As we pay tribute during this Memorial Day weekend, I am reminded of my father, an Air Force and Vietnam veteran, and everyone who selflessly served and serves our country so that we can enjoy 
the wonderful freedoms that come along with living in America. However, those freedoms do not come without a cost. And we recognize that today and every day as we honor and remember our fallen service men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice to ensure we will always enjoy these freedoms. We owe them and our Gold Star families an immense debt of gratitude. The loved ones of our Gold Star families laid their lives down to protect all that we so richly enjoy here in this great country. There are no words that can accurately capture my deep appreciation to these brave servicemen and women and to all of our Gold Star mothers and families. Let this beautiful monument serve as a daily reminder of the sacrifice made by these heroic individuals as well as their families. This monument is a great addition to this beautiful park. I want to thank the Gold Star mothers and each and every person who dedicated so much of their time and resources to allow this monument to come to fruition. I want to also thank John Markley and all of our Veterans Park Commission, the City Streets and Parks Department, Penn College, and every single volunteer for your commitment to the upkeep and maintenance of this marvelous park. I would like to close with a few words of President Lincoln and what he said during his Gettysburg Address. And I quote, it is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth." End quote. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. For our next uh, speaker, I'd like to introduce Chad Thornton. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Again, stated, my name is Chad Thornton. I'm a 20-year Marine Corps veteran. One of my jobs in the Marines was to be a CACO, or a Casualty Assistant Calls Officer. As a CACO, the first one of my duties was to notify the family of their loved ones being killed in action. No matter what time of day or, or what day, of, day it was, we had to go. The Keiko additional duties are to bring their loved one home from overseas, finalize any additional paperwork, like the service member's SGLI or their life insurance, and to make sure the viewing and funeral honors are exactly what and how the family members wanted. That being said, in 2010, I was stationed at MWSS 472 Detachment Alpha in Wyoming, Pennsylvania. On July 27, 2010, Gunner Sergeant Williams and I were called into our first sergeant's office, and we were assigned to CACO. The report was for Lance Corporal Abram L. Howard. From I and I staff, MP Company, North for Sales. After our first sergeant briefed us of our duties, I assumed Lee Keiko and my gunnery sergeant assumed as escort for the Marines for the Marines not notification. The gunnery sergeant and I went and changed into our Green Alphas uniform and proceeded to travel directly to the Howard family home. As per procedure, I contact the state police of Matoresville to notify when and why we were coming to the Howard, Howard family home. They dispatched two officers immediately to locate the family and keep an eye on them till we reached their home. As the gunnery sergeant and I pulled into the Howard family home driveway, we noticed there was family members playing music and people talking in the kitchen. As we walked up the stairs to the front door, everything got quiet in the house. I knocked on the door 
and Mr. Bart Howard answer the answer the knock. Mr. Howard, being a former Marine, I could see in his eyes he knew why we were there. The gunner star and I asked if we could step in the the house and speak with him and Mrs. Howard. Mr. Howard stated his wife wasn't home yet and that she would be home shortly. When Mrs. Howard came back to home, excuse me, when Mrs. Howard came back home through her front door and saw the gunnery sergeant and she instantly teared up and asked us what was wrong. That is when I gave them the horrible news that their Marine, their son, Lance Corporal Abram L. Howard, was killed in action. Excuse me. <clears throat> to this day, I am still the Howard family's guardian angel and the three other families. Being here to speak at the Gold Star Family's memorial is a truly an honor. This memorial will not only give the, the memories of the families, but their loved ones that they lost. Semper Fidelis, God bless, and have a happy Memorial Day weekend. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce Mr. Chad Graham, President and CEO of the Woody Williams Foundation. Well, good afternoon. It is certainly an honor to be here with all of you today. And Staff Sergeant, thank you so much for your comments. You folks can see the love that this Gold Star family and that special connection they have with their guardian angel. As Ken mentioned, I work for the Woody Williams Foundation and I count that as the honor of my life. I also have the special blessing of being the grandson of our founder and namesake, Medal of Honor recipient, Herschel Woody Williams. Woody couldn't be here today at the young age of 98. He's hard to keep home, but uh, Per doctor's orders, he wasn't able to be here, but I can guarantee you he would not love nothing more than to be here with each and every one of you today. And I asked him what he would like me to share with you. And if any of you have had the opportunity to meet my grandfather, Woody, and if you know what he's about, it's not surprising that it was just a very simple, straightforward thank you. Tell this community thank you. Tell those Gold Star families, we are fully and wholeheartedly committed to you and to carrying on the legacy of your loved ones. And that's why we're here today. As I drove up from Kentucky, I was overcome with gratitude. I looked around at the beautiful mountainsides and started to think about the freedoms that we enjoy each and every day. But as mentioned many times today, that does not come without a price. Brave men and women have stepped forward and written that check. They've paid for it with their life. And it is our responsibility, each and every one of us, to live a life that is worthy of those sacrifices that have been made for you and I. The Gold Star Families Memorial Monument Project started as a single effort in the state of West Virginia, those foreign folks down the river there. And it's now grown to a nationwide effort. That is not because of the Woody Williams Foundation. It's not because of Woody Williams. It's because there is a need. As a country, we need to honor our Gold Star Families. As a country, we need to realize that every day for them is Memorial Day. As we unveil this monument in just a few moments, you'll see the silhouette of a saluting service member. That service member 
is not coming home. And I ask that today, as many of the speakers have so eloquently put, let's focus our attention, our hearts, and our minds on that and the true meaning of Memorial Day. Each one of these projects, as of this coming Monday, there will be 100 of these monuments around the country with either one completed or in process in all 50 states and Guam. And we are all connected. This, this community is now connected with each and every one of those. We have a new project team that just started here in, in Pennsylvania. We've got several of those folks from down in Harrisburg. We want to extend our appreciation for them coming here to once again be a part of this community, the community of, of remembrance, and to show their commitment to each and every one of our Gold Star family members. But these projects do not happen on their own, much like this beautiful park. And I was, I was just blown away when I pulled in late last night. Everything was lit up. This park is second to none. And it is so encouraging to see a community that supports all of those who have served, memorializes those who've paid that ultimate sacrifice. But to put something together like this park and to do something like this monument takes someone to lead from the front, to step forward. When we see the need for something, when you, when you say that old saying, somebody should do something about that, well then you become that somebody. And I would like to recognize four very special people who led this effort here in Lycoming County. Bart and Connie Howard. Ken and Tammy Peace. Please help me thank them. It's a wonderful example of our veteran community coming together because they're connected to these Gold Star families. And I'll tell you a brief story. I've only prepared uh, an hour and a half remarks, so um, get comfortable. <laughs> Kidding. A quick story about how I met Bart and Ken. We were dedicating a monument in Lovettsville, Virginia, standing there after the ceremony, much like we'll do here in just a few moments. Very emotional. This beautiful granite tribute. And I see these two roughneck guys kind of walking towards me, and they had an agenda. They had something they wanted us to be a part of, and that's this money. You guys said from day one that you're committed to the success of this monument, and you did it in record time, in record speed, and through a time in our country when it's not easy to do this kind of work. And you did a tremendous job. But when you look into the eyes of these kind of folks and you see that commitment, our hope is that translates once again to our Gold Star family members. It's not the personal effort, it's the collective. Many times as we travel across the country, folks will ask myself and others from our foundation, and of course, that little Marine, as we affectionately call my grandfather, what keeps you going? And after a ceremony much like this, a police officer came up to Woody, who was also a Marine Corps veteran, and said, Woody, what keeps you going? What's your motivation? What's your drive? What's your cause? He said, the cause is greater than I. Six very simple words. Think about that. The cause is greater than I. The cause is our Gold Star families. The cause is remembering their loved ones and carrying that legacy forward. And it's greater than any one of us. I want to extend our gratitude to all those who have given of their time, their talent, their money. This Memorial Park is outstanding. Mr. Markley, cannot thank you enough for your leadership and your team with the commission and all those that do all this wonderful work. It certainly, we wouldn't have this monument if it weren't for you. And in just a few moments, we'll ask our Gold Star families to first walk over to the monument and then we'll ask everyone to join us over there for the unveiling as we dedicate the monument. But before we do that, I'd like to leave you with a challenge. When you're raised in a Marine Corps household, that's a daily charge. You always have a mission every day. 
So once again, I, I asked my grandfather what he might have me share with all of you, and he said, challenge them. Challenge them to learn a name. Challenge them to see the face of a Gold Star family. Challenge them to take that forward. So I would encourage each and every one of you, if you don't know the name of one of those who has paid that ultimate sacrifice, it's all around you. Learn their names. Say their names. Say them aloud. As the old saying goes, you die two deaths when your soul leaves your body and when your name is no longer spoken. And it is up to us to say those names, that simple gesture. And I would encourage each and every one of you, take time today to meet these Gold Star families. Ask them about their loved ones. Ask them to share a story with you. Take that with you. And I would challenge you to take not only that story from this place, not only that name, but what you saw here and share it with someone who isn't here. Tell them the importance of the true meaning of Memorial Day. And that is why we are all here together. So at this time, I would ask our Gold Star family members to make your way to the far side of the monument. Specialist Ford, David Hafner. Lance Corp. Ford, Abram Howard. Oh, yeah. 
ask everyone in an expression of our support of the Gold Star families and those names that were just said, the names that you just heard, is that we all sing together. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. So if we could all just express our appreciation of this beautiful sunshine. We hope that this is a blessing to you, everyone. Take time to come up here. Look at the faces of these family members and think about their loved ones. Thank you all for being a part. May God bless America. Thank you all.